Hey everyone, welcome back and in this video let's just discuss about one of the most important and difficult topics which I feel is in Node.js that is streams. Now streams in Node.js is a super important topic when you're working with applications with large data or performance is your concern then also something like streams can be handy. Let's understand what streams is exactly as someone who has never heard about streams why they are needed and just to give you a small introduction to streams in this video is my purpose. We'll not go deep into streams because it's it's very vast and it could probably be a complete course let alone a single video. So we're going to be starting off with streams why that is needed and Take it from there. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Okay, let's let's try to invent stream, right? I mean, let's see how streams would be invented in a real world use case scenario. Let's say you have a computer and you have a server over here. And on computer, you have your hard disk, right? Let's say SSD or hard disk, whatever it is. And you have a two terabyte game file with you. Right? On your server itself, let's say this is an EC2 instance, the server has a 8 GB memory, 8 GB RAM, right? And you want to upload this file on the server. Let's say it has also a SSD of 4 terabyte, let's assume. Right, so now in order to upload this, what you do, let's say if you have a simple web page to upload this, right? A simple web browser or web page where you select this file, you know, click on upload. Let's assume you just do that and click on upload button and it starts uploading. Uploading 1%, 2%, 3% and so on. So if you know a little bit about computers, the way this would work is that when you're trying to upload this, if you don't use a concept like stream, what you can think of is that this client, this client would actually upload the full file on the server. Then the server, once it receives the file chunk, so this is the chunk of the file, it will actually write it on hard disk, right? On the server's hard disk. So basically your client sends you a full huge response as a chunk and then you write it on hard disk. But where is this chunk stored exactly? This chunk is stored inside RAM, right? And we know that your RAM is just eight gigabytes. So even theoretically, even if you assume that nothing is taking any RAM or anything on the computer, which is obviously wrong, you still cannot go beyond eight GB, right? In a single upload. But originally you have a two terabyte file. So how do you actually upload this on a server with just eight GB of RAM? Well, the obvious answer is, if you think about this a little, it will become obvious that if this is a two terabyte file, you start uploading this in a smaller chunks, right? Let's say this is just four GB chunk, then this is also four GB chunk and so on. So one way is that you do it on the client side. The other way is that as you're receiving the stuff on the server, you start splitting at this and you know, the moment you receive a four gigabyte of chunk, you write it on the disk. Then you clear up the RAM and then proceed forward, right? So when you do this on the server, what you are essentially doing is that in a way, I mean, this is exactly, I mean, it's not 100% a stream like thing, but in a way it's, it's kind of what streams do. Because what streams do is that they take chunks of data and they, just let you process it first, right? So just like if you have a stream of water, for example, going, you don't know how much water is remaining, but you can manipulate the water as it is flowing, right? You can probably take out a slice, you can insert more of something, you can pause it, you can st even stop it, you can end it, you can destroy the stream of water and so on. Similarly, in cases of data, for example, when you're uploading this data, you don't have to just get everything at once in the RAM itself, in the memory itself, you can create a stream of upload, right? So what it means is that this client, as it is uploading, your server would actually stream this data to you. Just like you would see on YouTube when you are watching a video, the video actually gets streamed to you, right? In a, in a specific manner. It's not that the whole video needs to be downloaded first and then it streams. Similarly, on server, you don't need to upload the whole file once and then your computer would actually process it. Your computer can actually stream the data as it is coming from other sources, other external sources, right? Now this external source could very well be your own computer's file system as well. Similarly, another example is that this server right here, let's say this server has to send it, this computer a 10 GB file, right? So the way it can do it is number one is that it can read the whole file with fs.read file sync or read file. And then basically, you know, just send this file after reading it in memory to the client. Or you can open a stream to the file 
And as you are reading it in Node.js, you are also sending it to the client. And client is also aware about that, hey, this is coming as a stream. So I have to wait for the end of stream to make sure that I've received all the data. Streams is a very common and very popular way of interacting with external data sources, especially when you go a little bit low level, you know, on sockets, TCP, for example, and sockets of all sorts of web sockets, for example, files handling, especially with, you know, larger files. And in general, also streams is very useful for performance because you don't have to just, you know, clutter or just block your RAM for a large payload. Even if you can afford a large payload, it's generally a good idea to stream it somehow so that you prevent the resource abuse. Okay, so now we, once we have a decent idea about why you need streams, because we have limited RAM and obviously we want to just start streaming stuff as soon as we can because a lot of times a little data is also useful than the whole data at once. These are primary reasons why we can and we should stream but how do you actually stream in Node.js and what exactly Node.js provides you in terms of streaming stuff? Let's take a look at that. So in Node.js, we primarily have four types of streams. The first stream is a readable stream. The second stream is a writable stream. The third stream is a duplex stream. And a fourth type of stream is a transformation stream, right? Or a transform stream. So I'm not gonna get into transform stream. And we are also not going to cover the duplex stream in this video, but duplex stream in general is a stream where you can read and write both, right? Read is a stream where you're only allowed to read from it. So imagine a water stream again. So read stream is kind of like you can only extract water out of the stream. You cannot put the water back. Write stream is something where you cannot see the water, what the data contents is. You can only put something inside it right? Duplex stream is something where you can do both and transformation stream is where you pass, you know, you, you put a filter or a dam or something which changes how the water looks or behaves like. And in this case, water is our data and the stream is basically the stream itself, right? So let's understand a few examples of read stream, for example. So let's say, like I said, if you have 10 GB file on your system and you want to send it to the client, right to the end user what you will do is you will open a read stream fs.create read stream or whatever the api is and what you will do once you have this stream with you you will actually write the data you are getting from the stream on the socket itself remember we talked about tcp sockets the good thing about streams is that you can pipe them together and by pipe what i mean is that you can take one stream and pipe the output of one stream to the input of another. So in this case, what we are doing essentially for this 10 gigabytes of file is that we open this as a read stream and because our socket is opened in the right mode, the socket where, you know, we have to deliver the file, we can actually pipe them together and call it a day. Why? Because once we open this in read stream, all we have to do is, you know, just write it on the socket pipe, which we have, the socket stream, which we have. And whatever we write on the socket, gets automatically delivered to this client over here. So this is an example of a read stream where you only open this file in read stream mode and then you pipe it to a socket which is open either in write stream or in duplex mode, right? So either of modes would work fine. You just need to work with the socket. Similarly, with write mode, this, this actually covers a little bit of example of write mode. But if you want to open this in another way, what you can do is let's say you open the socket's body, I mean the response which you're getting from the client into read mode, right? So you have a socket and you have some incoming data from the client itself, right? And in this case, let's say you're uploading stuff. So what you do is you open, let's say fs.create write stream and you open a write stream on an empty file. Let's say this is just game.zip. When you open this in write mode, let's say this is zero bytes. But what you can do is that you can pipe the sockets read stream onto this fs.create write stream. So what this means, as and when Node.js would get start getting the responses on the socket over here, it's gonna start writing stuff on this particular write stream, which is this file over here. And the way streams work, like we have discussed, all of these streams have certain buffer sizes. So in this case, the earlier example which we discussed, we actually got a four gigabytes of buffer, which is, which is obviously way too much for a stream. It's not four gigabytes of size, is not something which I have seen. Uh, the size of the buffer can be controlled, but it is usually smaller in megabytes or sometimes even in kilobytes. So 
what this means is whenever you have that much chunk of data, your write stream would actually flush that data on the on the hard disk or whatever it is, right? So this is how you interact with read and write streams. Like I said, duplex streams are pretty awesome also, just like socket, a TCP socket actually opens in a duplex mode because you as a client can also read and write on it and you as a server can also read and write on it. So you can imagine like a web socket connection is kind of like a stream itself, right? And I mean, low level, it's actually a stream anyway because it's a TCP socket. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it for a little 101 introduction for streams with Node.js. Hopefully you learned something new with this because I mean, this is just, it's, it's like the tip of the whole iceberg of, you know, how streams work actually. And streams is, is like a really interesting topic and something which um, is, I feel, a difficult one as well. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you liked this. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.